Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. My name is Paul Torsolini, and in this episode, we will be discussing the flow of various energy sources in the United States, from raw resources to their final point of consumption. We will cover primary energy sources at a high level, and then we'll look at what's called a Senke diagram and get into the details of where and how different energy sources are consumed in the United States. Finally, we'll talk more specifically about the generation of electricity and what energy sources have been used over the past 20 years. So in other episodes, we've talked about how much energy the United States uses. And remember, this is typically measured in quads, which is a quadrillion or 10 to the 15 BTUs. When we look at where that energy comes from, we can see on a pie chart that it is dominated by fossil fuels. Petroleum, natural gas, and coal make up a significant portion of this mix of energy sources. Other sources, such as biomass, wind, solar, geothermal, and hydro, are all renewable energy sources, with the majority of that historically coming from biomass, hydro, and wind. The last category of sources is nuclear power. We can then take these data points from the pie charts we've produced, what's called a Senke diagram. This one was created by Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and it shows the approximate flows of energy in the United States for the year shown here. If you've never seen a diagram like this before, it can be complicated to digest all the information, but we'll walk through it together. In general, this diagram is read from left to right, with primary energy sources on the left and end use sectors on the right. The flow of each energy source going to each end use sector is depicted by the colored bars, and the amount of energy is depicted by the width of the bars, as well as by the numbers printed all over the diagram. These numbers are the amount of energy measured in quads at each stage of energy flow. So let's walk through an example. On the left-hand side of the diagram, you can see those same primary energy sources we showed in the pie charts at the beginning of this episode. On the right-hand side, you can see four end-use sectors, buildings, split into residential and commercial, industry, and transportation. Petroleum was the largest primary energy source in the United States in 2023. 35.4 quads were used across various end-use sectors. As we move to the right, we see the first branch off the main petroleum bar is a thin line going to electricity generation. To be specific, 0.17 quads of petroleum were used to generate electricity at the few remaining oil-fired power plants in the United States. Moving further to the right, the bar splits again. The bottom branch, the largest branch of the petroleum energy flow, shows 24.8 quads being consumed by the transportation sector, which is all of the vehicles in this country using gasoline, diesel, and other petroleum-based fuels. The next branch up from there shows 8.53 quads being consumed by the industrial sector, and two smaller branches above that show 0.94 quads for the commercial sector and 0.97 quads for the residential sector. These three sectors are using petroleum mainly for heating, whether for industrial process heating or for heating buildings. The final piece of this diagram then is what is shown coming out of the pink end use boxes to the right. Shown in dark gray and light gray, these bars indicate how much energy is actually being used for its intended purpose and how much energy is being rejected or wasted as exhaust. We'll look at this more in detail in a moment. But that's how you read this diagram. Primary energy sources to the left flow to various end use sectors to the right, and the width of each colored bar indicates the amount of energy flowing in that branch. So then looking at the other sources, coal is another large source. It actually used to be a lot larger. The amount of energy from coal has drastically reduced over the last few decades. Years ago, coal was a common heating source for buildings and industry, as well as a fuel source for electricity generation. Today, the majority of the coal consumed in the United States is for electricity production, and a very small amount still goes into buildings and industrial sectors for heating. 
Natural gas then is getting split more evenly among its end uses. A large fraction of natural gas goes into industry for direct process heating, and then a lot of the nation's homes and office buildings are heated with natural gas. So you'll see a portion of that going into residential and commercial. A growing portion of natural gas, though, is going into electricity generation. Renewable energy sources, solar, hydro, wind, geothermal, are predominantly being used for electricity generation. You can see that a small portion of some of these is going to other end uses, like geothermal being captured for heating buildings. Biomass can also be considered a renewable energy source. Unlike the other renewable energy sources, though, biomass is primarily going to end use sectors like transportation and heating for buildings and industry. Lastly, nuclear is used exclusively for electricity generation in this country. Now let's focus on this electrical generation piece. We can see that 32 quads of energy go into the generation of electricity, but only 13.3 quads come out as usable electricity. 24.3 quads are wasted as rejected energy and that 13.3 quads of usable electricity is split between residential, commercial, and industrial, with a small portion going to transportation. But the majority of electricity generation involves thermodynamic processes to turn a turbine. And we end up losing a lot of energy or exhaust or waste heat. This waste heat is discharged or rejected into the environment, meaning the air, as well as nearby bodies of water, like streams, lakes, rivers or the ocean. And a typical thermoelectric power plant is only about 35% efficient, so there are significant energy losses. But there are some natural gas power plants called combined cycle plants which can approach 60% efficiency. This point about rejected energy and inefficiencies is important to remember because it's a key part of two important terms, site energy and source energy, which we'll cover in more detail in a separate episode dedicated to these topics. But for now, let's finish this episode by looking at this chart from the EIA that shows how energy sources for electricity have changed over the last 70 plus years. The energy flow diagram we looked at earlier was just a snapshot of one year, but notice how these have changed over time. Coal had been on the increase for many years, up until it peaked in the mid-2000s, and then it started declining. And as it declined, you can see that the electricity generated by natural gas started to increase at almost the same rate. And in 2015, natural gas overtook coal as the leading fuel source for electricity generation in the United States. Since then, coal has continued to decline, and natural gas has continued to increase. Meanwhile, nuclear energy has remained very constant over the last 20 years, with very few additions or retirements of reactors. The next handful of energy sources include three major renewable energy sources, wind, conventional hydroelectric, and solar. But it's pretty hard to see these in detail on this graph, so let's zoom in a little bit. Now you can see this data better. Let's talk about hydro first. Like nuclear, hydro has also been pretty constant over the last 20 years. In fact, the small year-to-year -year fluctuations in electricity generation by hydroelectric plants is more dependent on droughts in certain parts of the country than on actual demand for power. During a wetter year when a reservoir is full, it's better to release water through the turbines and generate electricity than just releasing the water over a floodway. And if there is a dry year with drought conditions and the water level in the reservoir is low, then the amount of electricity generated during that time decreases. Now let's look at wind and solar. You'll see the line for wind power generation has just recently eclipsed conventional hydropower after a dramatic increase over the past 10 years. Solar has also seen a similar rise, although less dramatic than wind. The improved economics of wind and solar has been one of the main catalysts for their rise in electricity output, and they were still both expected to continue to increase. 
but it's important to note that it's still a long way to go before these renewables are generating as much electricity as natural gas, coal, or nuclear. That's all for this episode. Please feel free to browse the resources to learn more about energy sources and how they're used in the United States. And as always, thanks for watching.